Dave Parody here with another slide makeover video podcast based on the ideas in my book, The Visual Slide Revolution. For today's makeover, what I decided to do is to just uh, go search for a presentation on the web that somebody had posted or organization had posted and, and see if I could find something just as a, as a kind of a test, see what we're, what's out there. And here's the slide that I found. This is a, a presentation by a government agency talking about uh, performance of hospitals in their particular region. And what it, uh, it certainly it tells you the data. This is a, a graph that's actually inserted from another program and it causes a bunch of problems and today's lesson is really about how we make graphs clear and less cluttered. What they've done here is they've got a lot of information on the screen and the real message is actually in that sort of salmon colored box on the right hand side. That's really what we're trying to get the audience to understand but there's there's so much going on on this slide it's very hard to figure out. Let's take a look at what we can do with this slide. Here's how I redid it. What we found in the latest quarter is that 47 percent of our acute hospitals actually showed a decline in their profits when we measure them using the total margin. So if we look at their performance across the last number of fiscal years and we look at the total margin for those hospitals in the 75th percentile this is how uh, it has moved over the last few years. For the median hospital, the green line here, and for those hospitals in the 25th percentile, that's how it's moved. You'll notice that all of them in between the end of fiscal year 08 and fiscal year 09 second quarter, all of them have declined. But what we've also seen is that the weakest hospitals, those in the, the 25th percentile, showed the largest decline. So those least able to uh, really handle a decline have seen the largest decline unfortunately and that's a great concern. So what we've done here is we've taken the same information but we've got a, a, rid of a lot of that clutter that distracts our audience from what our clear message is and we've made it a lot cleaner we still have all the information there but we've made it cleaner we've also built this graph in PowerPoint what does that allow us to do it allows us to do the animation where each of the lines came on one by one that is an advantage because we can talk about each of those lines we added the the call out that makes our point about the weakest hospitals being uh, the, the the worst off because they showed the largest decline in the last uh, half year so what are some of the lessons that we can learn when labeling graphs because that's really what this makeover is about first of all Whenever you're using any graph, make sure that you write a headline for it, a summary of what your key point about the graph is. Too often what we're simply doing in the headline, the title for the graph, is talking about the data. Here's the data that this graph shows. Well, that's, that's not useful to an audience. They don't know why they should be looking at it. They don't want know what the point of the data is. And some presenters will say, but, but I just show the graph and they'll get the point. No, they won't. Not everybody can get the point instantly from a graph. So you need to, to make that point in the headline. Next, if you use both an axis and data labels, you're going to create a lot of clutter. In the original graph, they had a very packed axis, plus they had a data label. Every single point had the percentage. That's kind of like wearing belt and suspenders. There's occasionally very few times that's going to be useful. But in most cases, it adds a lot of clutter that takes away from the effectiveness of your graph. The legend. In the original graph, the legend was down at the bottom to tell you what line was what color. And a legend, as we know from the, the research that Professor John Sweller has done at the University of New South Wales, is that a legend in a graph causes a problem with the split attention effect is what he calls it where you have to move between the legend and the graph a legend and the graph to figure out what's going on instead move the text that you have right into the graph you'll notice that the labels that I had in the in my graph the makeover were right beside the lines so we didn't have to go back and forth we knew exactly what the line represented and finally use a call out right in the graph to make the point to show where the point is we had the curly brace call out and the text that said what the problem was is that those the, the, the lowest, the 25th percentile hospitals declined the most on this particular measurement. And so we've, we've given them a headline, we've given them a call out and our points are now crystal clear. 
whenever you're using a graph, keep these ideas in mind so that it's clearer for your audience and you can communicate more effectively when you're using that graph. If you want more information on the book, go to www.visualsliderevolution.com for more information on my training, consulting, uh, the videos. Go to www.thinkoutsidetheslide.com. This has been Dave Parody with another PowerPoint slide makeover to help you communicate more effectively when you use PowerPoint.